Hey folks, Jessica here. So today I'm going to talk about team building in Dream Blue Fantasy. Uh, this has been a hard topic to approach just because everybody has a different pool of characters and also different needs based on how strong your grid is and what's in your grid and then also what you're doing. Are you do are you just farming? Are you doing like easy content? Are you solo? Or are you doing hard content and you're in a group like doing like a six man like I don't know, Ultimate Bahamut HL or something. Uh, it's all going to vary. So I'm going to try and give you some general guidelines on things to look for when putting a team together, and then also more specialized teams. Um, like, I'll show you what they look like and what you might want to use them for. So, the natural place to start is what do you do early on? Uh, early on, uh, to be perfectly honest, you don't have a lot of um, options. The game's balanced around that, so don't worry about it too much. You're probably just going to want to use the best characters you have, and if anything, th your main priority should be getting a grid that all boosts the same element. So, for example, these weapons all boost the dark element, and then a team that matches that element that you're boosting, so all dark characters. If you have an SSR character that um, matches element, great, use them, because they're going to be your best option. An SSR character that's on the correct element is probably always going to be better than an R character and the majority of SR characters. That said, if you have an SSR character that doesn't match element, like a light character, um, you're probably going to want to use the SR dark character or the R dark character even over the SSR character that doesn't match element, because you want your grid and your characters to line up. Now, beyond that, and by the way, if you want more on weapon grids, um, just take a look at my video on weapon grids that I put up, God, like two years ago now? But it's it's still fairly up to date in terms of like the advice it gives there, uh, and I'll give you a better understanding how grids work in general. So mid-game is when you start having more options. You have more characters, uh, and you're going to have more classes on Vegeta or Dran, whatever your main character is. Um, classes that like there's so many classes I, I don't even know how many classes there are right now like especially when you get to tier four class row four classes and yx row two classes uh you just have so much flexibility here uh and uh you can bring really like uh the specific skills that fill the holes in your party composition now um, the place I usually start with when I'm building a team is I look for key buffs and debuffs. So what I mean there is like um, a key buff, for example, arbitrary example, something like uh, rage, an attack up buff for your team. It doesn't have to specifically be rage. There are many, many, many buffs on characters that give an attack up buff for the team and um, like any of them will, will do. You just want to have effects that buff your team up, uh, your ability to deal damage. That will help a lot. Uh, even more importantly, you're going to need skills like, uh, for example, uh, miserable miss type effects. Skills that lower the enemy's attack and defense. That's super important because um, attack down and defense down for the enemy caps at 50%. So they'll be doing like half the amount of damage they would be, and you'll be doing like double the amount of damage you normally would be. And that ends up being a huge part of your survivability and your damage output. Uh, so watch out for those kind of things. Um, now, frustratingly, the game doesn't expose like how much death down and attack down specifically it's giving you here. Um, so you have to look on the wiki. Just get used to checking the wiki to find specific numbers on things. Uh, but Miserable Mist is fifty, sorry, 25% uh, attack and 25% defense down. So it gets you halfway there. Uh, you're going to need to stack it with some other effect in order to hit 50%. However, I don't really want to get into this because it's, <laughs> it's, it's very convoluted and doesn't really make sense. But I, I need to mention it. Um, the way attack down and defense down stacks is a little weird. So Miserable Mist lowers attack and it lowers defense. So it is considered a double-sided debuff. Something that only lowers attack or only lowers defense. So like, for example, uh, where is an example I have quickly on here? Warrior. So um, armor break on Warrior. 
only lowers defense. So it is a single-sided debuff because it only lowers the one, whereas Miserable Mist lowers both. So if you combine Miserable Mist with Armor Break, you'll hit the defense cap, um, the minus 50% uh, defense cap. And that that's how you get there. So that that's a solid combination of stuff. Um, however, if you were to take a character like uh, like Altair, for example, whose um, battle plan train down is uh, basically it's basically miserable miss. It's attack down, defense down, and then additionally water defense down. So it's a little bit better than miserable miss. This would not stack with Miserable Miss because it has attack down and defense down, so it's considered a double-sided debuff. It's literally, like it's a very strange system, but that's how it works. This is also where like someone in the comments tells me that Altair's uh, battle plan crane down actually does stack with Miserable Miss, and I lose my fucking mind. Uh, <laughs> um, actually, there are exceptions, which is why I make that joke, um, and. Oh, we're getting to woods now. I'm just going to mention this real fast because it's good to know that there are exceptions to that, the way those things stack. And the one I think of immediately when I mention that is um, Jean d'Arc, Light Jean d'Arc. Reversal plus plus. Hit the foe's defense and attack. That's double sided, right? I mean, it lowers defense and attack. So it would not stack with Miserable Miss, except for it does. <laughs> because for. For some strange reason, this is considered a single-sided debuff, even though everything about it says that it's a double-sided debuff. The reason is, it starts off as a single-sided debuff. Until you get to level 100 Jean d'Arc, it only lowers defense. When you get to 100, then it gains a component that lowers attack also. So I guess because of that, it is still considered a single-sided debuff, so it does stack with Miserable Mist, which is a double-sided debuff. Mm -hmm. So if you're playing light and you take Miserable Mist on Vegeta and you take Jean d'Arc and you cast Miserable Mist and then Reversal, right there it will cap it will cap the both the attack down and the defense down on the opponent. That's why Jean d'Arc is a very strong character if you're soloing as a light person, uh, a light person, uh, a light player. Uh, other um, other things to look for a multi attack rate buff. So. Depending on what element you're playing, it it's gonna be um, it's gonna be more and more important that you have a multi attack rate buff. So uh, let's see who has a multi attack rate buff. Um, Cagliostro, good example. Best girl. Uh, Cagliostro who also has a defense down single sided buff. Um, You'll find there are characters that are specifically like support characters that bring a lot of the key components to the table. So usually when I'm building a team, it's gonna have like a support character or two, like an Altair is a good example, Cagliostro is a good example. They cover a lot of the important bases, um, as opposed to a team that's just all attackers all the time. So Cag um, has Phantasmagoria, which is attack up, defense up, and multi-attack rate up. And multi-attack rate specifically means triple attack and double attack. Uh, if it's not both, it'll be, it, will sp it will specify one or the other. And that's important because combined with um, a grid that has stuff like, has stuff like, uh, say, like uh, AK4A, which gives you a triple attack rate buff, you can get your triple attack rate up uh, and double attack rate up to the point where you're most of the time double attacking or most of the time triple attacking. Um, it's considerably easier to get double attack up to the cap than triple attack. Um, so triple attack skills are very valuable because of that. Uh, but if you can do that, um, your character's going to do so much more damage because while they're triple attacking, they're doing three times as much damage, they're getting three times as much charge bar. It's just um, you always want to have some sort of multi-attack rate buff. So now, beyond that, um, I think we get into more specialized stuff. And I'm just going to refer to this as synergies. So what I mean by this is um, you want your team to have synergistic abilities. Uh, let me give you an example. Uh, Alexio, God's Horn Alexio, she's got the ability um, uh, Mirror Blade Eruption. So based on the number of Mirror Blades she has, which is a buff she gets, maximum stack 5, 
Uh, she does more damage, has more defense, and has a, a stronger charge attack. Uh, she gets Mirror Blades for whenever she charge attacks. So as you can see in Mirror Blade, he likes deploys one Mirror Blade. She's also got a skill that gives her Mirror Blade. But because of this, you want to get her to Mirror Blade 5 as soon as possible. And you do that by giving her um, the ability to charge attack as much as possible. So you take characters like Octo or Ada, um, who is exceedingly good at giving charge bar to other characters because he builds his own charge bar very fast and he gives everybody else charge bar through skills and the fact that he charge attacks all the freaking time. Uh, and then he also steal the opponent's charge bar. So Ada works very well with Alexio because they are synergistic in that way. He gives her the ability to build up mirror blade stacks very rapidly. Uh, another example of uh, a synergistic uh, character setup, let's take someone like, where are ya? Uh, yeah, like, Air, um, Air ha has the jammed effect, which increases his um, attack based on how low his HP is. Uh, so every time he uses Guilty Break, he lowers his HP and then gets the ability to gain more attack based on how low his HP is. So he hits really freaking hard, but he's going to be hovering on really low health, so he can die very easily. Uh, so this is another example where a character like Alexiel is very good because Alexiel has a ton of abilities that, that stop damage to the team. Uh, and because of that, um, she pairs well with Air because she can protect Air. Uh, I believe she doesn't have hostility up, does she? No, she doesn't have hostility up. Characters that have hostility up on their EMP skills also synergize well with enemy characters. A uh, couple like more like examples, and there's tons of examples of synergies. Y you'll find them as you look at character skills, and it's important to just read through your character skills and see what they do specifically. And a lot of the fun of the game is finding these little synergies. Um, but another really like really obvious synergy is if you're running stamina weapons, so weapons that increase your attack based on how high your HP is, with characters that can heal or defend you. So like um, lost stamina weapons on this team, and then running Funt who has heals, Saranon who has heals, and Io who has heals. They all have the ability to heal, so they synergize very well with um, with uh, a stamina team. <laughs> I'll give you the opposite example also, which is a rather notorious team, which is Amity Dark. So an Amity Dark team is a bunch of Amity weapons. Uh, which is the opposite of stamina. It gives you attack based on how low your HP is. And then Summer Zoe, the game breaker herself. If you aren't familiar with Summer Zoe, when she came out, she kind of completely broke the game. And Stamina Dark was completely dominant for like over a year. And that's because she has the ability Conjunction, which lowers everyone's HP to one. You would think that's a huge drawback, right? But because you're running Enmity, it gets you maximum enemy boost. So you hit really, really, really hard. And then in addition to that, she gives you damage immunity that turn. So you're not gonna die that turn either. Like you're invulnerable for that turn. So it's a completely safe maximum enemy boost. And then you have drain on top of that, which in most situations will let you gain back enough health that over the next four turns, your team's still safe. They'll just heal back to a point where they're not gonna die from a single hit. So that is like a classic example, a rather notorious example of character synergies, character and grid synergies. Other things to consider. Are you running stuff like, God, do I even have one in my grid? Uh, hang on a second. Wasn't prepared for this. Uh, yeah. Okay, I'll have to find one real quick. But if, are you running stuff like a Bahamut weapon or um, an Ultima weapon, an Atma weapon? because that, that's gonna really affect your team composition also. Where is my Bahamut Dagger? Please tell me I didn't stick in the stash. Okay, here it is. Uh, dagger Bahamut Coda boosts a human and a rune attack and HP. So this only boosts human characters and only boosts a rune characters. So if you're running something like a Bahamut weapon, and if you're running a Magnum Grid, it is very common to run a Bahamut weapon because um, it's, a, it's a rather substantial boost. You're going to want all characters on your team, if possible, 
that fits that um, requirement. So let me see if I even have a team like that. Ilsa, you're human, right? Right, girl? You're human, right? Oh, you're a rune of the years. Should have given away. Um, like, though, she was primal. Actually, I don't know if primal counts anymore. Um, okay, let me think of a better example real quick. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, this team will do. You all fit. Are you unknown? You're unknown, aren't you? Yeah, you're unknown. Okay, perfect. So this team, uh, the Jita, uh, main character, counts as all races. Um, just keep that in mind. All races, anything that says it boosts a specific race will boost the main character. And then characters like uh, Gria are unknown. Same thing as the Jita. Anything that boosts a specific race will boost an unknown character. So unknown characters, very good for that reason. Uh, and then the rest of the team, Altair is human and Silver are human. So this team would work very well with a Bahamut Dagger because everyone on the team would benefit from the Bahamut Dagger's effect. There are some situations where if a character is exceedingly powerful but doesn't match the Bahamut weapons effect, you might still want to use the character. But in general, you're going to want to run a team that does match the Bahamut weapons effect. Uh, moreover, if you're running an Ultima weapon, then a major consideration is how many characters can you get to match that Ultima weapon. So like this Ultima staff boosts characters with staff specialty. Uh, it boosts their attack, HP, and multi-attack rate. And it's a significant boost. It's a significant boost. Um, why this matters uh, is if you have a team like this, every single one of the people on this team benefit from that Ultima weapon. Uh, the Jita is a bishop, or sorry, a sage right now, which has staff specialty. Fun has staff specialty. Sauron has staff specialty. Isla has staff specialty. Um, like the whole front line matches. Ranvira does not have staff specialty, but she's an example of a character that is so good and has such a unique role that you would bring her even if she didn't ma match the ultimate weapon. Uh, and same thing with Song, like they're just uh, characters that have abilities that make them very useful even if they don't get the full bonus. And uh, yeah, that is something to keep in mind. Do you have anything that has an effect that would, uh, would change your team setup? Uh, there are even summons that will care about what teams you're running. I think the, like, the classic example is uh, Tez uh, uh, Tezcat. Tezcat the Polka. <laughs> I don't know how to say it. It's Tezcat. Um, uh, te God, I'm not even trying to say that ability. Holy shit. But Tezcat's aura gives you um, a buff based on the number of main allies types. So this means when you look at your front line, uh, like this team, I mean, it's not Earth, but like if this were an Earth team, this would get a full Tezcat buff because it's got three different types. It's got a heal, a special, and a balance. So like if you're running to a Tezcat summon, then you're going to need to start paying attention to um, uh, to what types you're running. So this, this team, attack, defense, special, would also get a full Tezcat bonus. Let me see if I have a team that doesn't get a full Tezcat. This team would not get a full Tezcat bonus. Um, in addition to the fact that it's not Earth, but because it's attack, attack, balance. So it's only, there's only two types of uh, characters here, not three. So that's that's how those work. So something else to keep in mind. So let's talk about more specialized tools to consider when team building. Uh, things like, and I'm just gonna use Dejita as, example, as an example because she's got, Dejita pretty, or your main character, if you're a grand player, uh, pretty much has every single um, like effect you could want covered. So it's gonna vary um, like what your team has, but you can usually fill in the blanks with your, uh, with your main character. One sec. Okay, I'm back, sorry for the cut. Um, I heard a noise in the background, and it was, of course, my cat's eviscerating a bag of cat litter in the kitchen. There's cat litter everywhere. Uh, like, I just, I spent a lot of time just now just scooping up cat litter. It's a good thing those cats are super cute, and I adore them and can never get mad at them, because that was a lot. 
they were actually like rolling around in it and playing with it but like i think i would have lost my mind if they actually used it as litter and like peed in it or something but now they're just playing a bit like with sand or something but oh i just cleaned that up i don't even know where we were uh we were we were talking about debuffs and buffs that are more specific to certain fights so these are ones that you don't necessarily need for every fight but it's good to know what characters you can find your team that bring them so you can build teams that are specific for a fight something like um blind you don't need it for every fight but uh if the boss like auto attacks super hard then blind can be a useful effect because uh it will just make them miss now and then which can totally save a character's life gravity wave gives the character the boss more charge diamonds makes some charge attack less basically useful for like a boss that has really powerful charge attacks charm similar to blind just saves you for, like randomly now and then dispel is a really commonly needed one that lots of characters have so like example um uh who has a dispel oh light vera <laughs> Yeah, our queen, Light Vera, my queen, uh, has um, on Blade of Light a Dispel effect. She can remove one buff effect. So you don't necessarily need to bring Dispel on Vegeta if you are running Light Vera. Uh, similarly, um, things like a damage cut you know, can be important on some fights, but not every fight. Uh, damage cut meaning things like uh, the Spartan Phalanx, which reduces um, all elemental damage to all parties, and... Um, that that is necessary for certain fights because there's certain triggers you're gonna need a phalanx uh, and there's other characters that have phalanx like abilities uh it's not necessarily just um just the spartan class so keep an eye out for those because those can occasionally be important uh similarly not not quite the same thing as a damage cut but a defense like characters with defensive abilities that aren't damage cuts again grand vera our queen uh because when she has Aegis Merge active, she will substitute herself for an ally that's going to be hit by an effect, or all allies if it's a multi-ally attack. Uh, and she'll also give herself a 1000% boost to defense when she soaks that hit, so she'll probably survive that hit also. So she basically can tank um, like really, really big hits for, for your team. And like, not necessary for every fight, but there are a lot of fights where that ability is going to save your life. Uh, speaking of like characters that are very, like there, there are certain characters that are generally powerful because like they're good attackers or they've got like a good suite of buffs. But there are characters that I that that are exceedingly good at like specific fights. So keep an eye out for them also. Um, characters like. Uh, I guess Vanya is a good example. These days, after her five star, she's just generally pretty good. Um, but Vampy used to be um, specifically a very good pick for fighting Omega um, Luminera, Chevalier, whichever you prefer, uh, because uh, she's a dark character that has uh, that has a dispel that has a dispel, and then she's also got like. A charm and she's also got the ability to delay with um, Scarlet Gift. She removes one of the first charge, uh, charge diamonds. Uh, like very good toolkit for messing with uh, Luminera. I think another one to cover is the Veil effect. Very important to have sometimes but not all the time. Uh, let's see who is Veil? Oh <laughs> Vera. Uh, Dark Vera this time though. Uh, let's pull up Dark Vera. And Dark Vera is a good example of a character that, again, fills a lot of roles on a team because she brings not only Veil, vale, Veil vale being a debuff immunity, stops the next debuff coming in, absolutely essential for some fights, but she also uh, has a mist effect, attack and defense down, in addition to buffing her attack and defense. Uh, this is why Vera, just OG Dark Vera, is still a very good character. Uh, even though her damage has kind of fallen off against more modern characters. Um, I kind of wonder if they'll update her sometime, because her toolkit is very comprehensive, but it is, but in general her character, and I, I feel like needs, needs a bit of a redesign, because her, neither here nor there, but her charge hack doesn't even have an auxiliary effect on it. But she's still very solid. So yeah, identify those characters that can fill a ton of roles. Um, usually when I put together a team, uh, trying to have someone that is like a buffer that can fill several of those roles 
uh, and then characters that are exceedingly good at like doing pure damage, uh, just a good mix uh, to to cover everything. Uh, like Altair is like the classic example. Um, kind of does everything. Boosts your charge bar. Has a mist effect. Has a rage effect. Um, can also boost crit on his Ugi. He's kind of like the total package in terms of buffs, which is why he's still one of the best water characters. And characters like Silva don't really have any group buffs. Like, almost exclusively selfish attacker, like, just boosts herself, but attacks for an exceedingly high amount of damage. Like, she can Ugi for, like, well over 6 million with my setup. Uh, and like that on its own is still a valuable thing, but identify them as those characters uh, for the roles they fill. So all here fills your buffer role, and um, like Silva fills your attacker role. Uh, the the thing this team is kind of missing is like a multi attack rate buff, but because of the nature of like the way this water team works, not super necessary. Uh, just because this water team is based on abusing the Kengo's ability with an unsigned Kanashige, um, this thing, to just give everybody charge bar all the time, and it oogies almost every turn. So, uh, yeah, all things considered when building a team, but like that's getting into more advanced stuff. Basically, to recap, you want to cover the major bases in terms of uh, buffs, so things like an attack up, um, elemental or just pure attack up, uh, defense down, attack down, you want to be able to cap. Uh, you want to identify if you're going to do a fight, if you need things like a damage cut, a dispel, heal, veil, paralyze, whatever. Uh, and then identify characters that have those things, and then try and put together a team that has every one of those things. So a team that can do everything, that has rage, has defense down, attack down, uh, has like the damage cut, kind of generally can go into any fight solo and like do decently well at it. And that's important. Uh, now, if you're in a raid, things are slightly different. When you're building a team, if you know specifically it's only, you're going to use it for raids, it's less important to have the total package as long as somebody in the raid, which almost always somebody in the raid will, as long as someone is bringing those key elements. Because you don't need um, to attack down, defense down the boss if someone else is only going to cast mist on the boss. Uh, so like that base is already covered. It's less important when you're, fi when you're fighting a raid. That's an important point to note because um, not everybody thinks about that. Things like Rage, if someone casts Rage, Rage is for all parties, so it will buff your team as well as their team. So like, it, the more people that are in the fight, the less important it is to bring those specific things. And then the last thing to talk about, um, and this is definitely more advanced, but be aware a little bit about um, what are considered meta choices for your element. Uh, what I mean by that are certain elements um, are very good at a specific thing. And if you have the right characters to match that meta play, then like that, that can be a very overwhelmingly strong choice. Um, like a team like this, like Water right now, their meta choice. Um, meta just meaning like this, like what a lot of people are running. Uh, is uh, It's an exceedingly powerful charge attack team uh, just because the way Kengo works and then the way Gria works um, because Gria will make Nagita like Ugi for like five mil, and then she'll like double Ugi for five mil, and then Gria will Ugi for five mil, and then like everyone else is gonna Ugi for a lot also. And then he had a Vajra, which is like the piece I'm missing frustratingly from this team. She also benefits, like everyone benefits charge attacks, and you hit really goddamn hard. Um, like a meta choice, uh, Stamina Light. Stamina, light has a lot of good stamina options. Enmity Dark, those are meta choices. So be aware that you can try and build towards those kind of teams also. Just an option. Those based, are based a lot more on what specifically your resources are though, so we're not going to get too much into that. Uh, this has been a general overview of uh, team building tricks and tips. Uh, I will actually do another part to this. Uh, talking more about how to evaluate 
uh, a character's strengths. Um, we'll look at tier lists and like why certain characters are rated at certain places on tier list, and just give you an, uh, the ability to kind of identify what characters are are strong characters relative to others. But that can be considered like a um, a team building like 201 or like a character analysis 101 or something. Uh, this is just about teams. So if you enjoyed this video and you find it helpful or you want to um, just support me in general, uh, like, comment, subscribe. I have mentioned this a few times, but I am trying to lean on um, content creation more as like an actual work thing as opposed to just something I do as a hobby now and then. So if you've noticed an uptick in how often I upload and stream, that's why uh, I'm trying to make it a real thing. So any amount of support you can give me, um, whether it be uh, by showing someone else this video or um, or just uh, subbing or, or checking out my Patreon, anything like that, be super helpful and mean the world to me. Thanks so much. Also, remember there is a Discord channel that I have if you want to talk to me or just talk to folks that are a fan of Grand Blue in general. Just uh, all the links down below. I will catch you guys next time. And yeah, see ya. Gotta clean up more cat litter. Sad face. <laughs> Bye.